Joining me now is a UFC bandweight contender who defeated Brian Caraway at UFC 222 this past weekend in Las Vegas. It is Cody, the Spartan Stamen, back on the program. Cody, how are you? I'm great, man. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for the time, and congratulations on the biggest win of your career. I guess that is fair to say this was by far, easily, undeniably the biggest win of your career. Uh, yeah, you know, I feel like every fight is the biggest, the biggest fight of your life, though. So, you know, say this is the biggest one. I say this is the biggest one to everyone else, but to me, there's a lot of fights that I think meant more to me than this one. Which ones? Uh, one fight in particular is when I fought Farkad uh, Sherpov. That was, like, the first real, legit, tough opponent that I, I thought I'd ever face. Now he's a world-class guy. Um, I still feel like he might be the toughest guy I've ever fought in the octagon or in the cage. Um, and, you know, getting that win, you know, uh, I think that was kind of what kind of set in motion everything else, you know, up to this point. And probably your UFC debut against Tyrion Ware as well. Yeah, the fight against Tyrion Ware, that was another fight, though, that I knew going into that fight, I was 100% I knew I was going to win. Uh, just like Tom Duke and Juan, just like Brian Caraway. Uh, but that, for whatever reason, that Farcock Sheriff fight was a fight that uh, I wasn't really sure if I, I, if I could beat him or not. Um, so that was like a breakthrough fight mentally for me, I think. That's really what, what, uh, what, what got me, uh, to believe in myself mentally, to believe that, you know, I could beat anybody, anybody in the cage. Interesting. Um, as far as the Caraway win goes, has it sunk in yet? Just sort of going by what you've been saying, that it, it it clearly was the biggest win of your career for the fans and because it put you in the rankings and all that, but maybe it didn't take all that long to really sink in? Uh, yeah, I, I think it started to sink in. You know, the fact that you know I'm a, I'm a ranked fighter and I see my name amongst you know, a lot of other uh, uh, really talented fighters. I think it's, it's kind of starting to sink in that I am, you know, amongst the elite in my division. Um, but I'm also really not satisfied with where I am. So, uh, you know, as much as I'm, I'm happy to have gotten that win, uh, I'm still hungry to get more. You're not satisfied with where you're at just because you have bigger aspirations uh, like everybody? Or are you not satisfied with your performance? Uh, I think both. Um, you know, I definitely have bigger aspirations in sport. Uh, in my performance, you know, uh, I really felt like that was going to be a fight that I could, you know, I really thought I could finish fairway on the seat, and I couldn't, you know, a lot of that had to do with, you know, how tough he was, but also, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have the greatest performance of my life, you know, but, you know, you're not training to be the best in your best day, you're training to be the best in your worst day, and, uh, you know, even on my worst day, I was, I was better than the number seven guy in the world. And I feel like people will forgive you. I mean, yes, it went to the split to, to a, a split decision, and you don't want to go to the judges at all. But I think people are going to forgive you. I mean, not like people are. are I, mean, I think you're being a little tough on yourself compared to the fans. But I think if anybody thought this wasn't a good performance, they got to forgive you because they got to keep in mind that hey, Brian Caraway was a ranked fighter. He was number seven, almost top five, and so no matter how you beat him, that's still a big win. That that's how I look at it, anyways. No, yeah, it, you know, you're, you're you're absolutely right. Yeah, it, it is it is a big win, but uh, you know, I feel like it, as long as I keep the bar, you know, extremely high for myself, uh, you know, my outcome is gonna be is gonna be better. Um, the, you know, I feel like as soon as yeah, I feel like when guys get racked with Daisy and they they, they start, uh, you know, kind of buying their own hype, that's when they start uh, falling apart as an athlete. You know, for me, I I, I want to stay hungry. I want to stay. Uh, I guess uh, I want to feel like an underdog, you know, my entire fighting career. I feel like that's going to that's gonna keep me working hard, improving, and evolving as an athlete. Do you feel like maybe you looked at the odds a bit too much and saw that you were actually a betting favorite going into the fight, at least for most of the time, and you you sort of saw that on, and, and figured, oh, they all have high expectations, and then you sort of had extra pressure on, on yourself. Is that at all what happened? Yeah, uh, no, I don't. I don't really pay attention to betting odds um, because you know I was a, I was a huge underdog against Tom Duke and that was a fight that I knew I won. I actually encouraged you know all my friends and everyone to bet to bet to bet on that fight, just knowing that I was going to win. Um, so I, you know, I'm not sure that I'm not sure the odds have a whole lot to do with it. But um, and plus, I think I think right before the fight, I was actually a, a betting underdog, which means that I think a lot of people probably put a bunch of money on Caraway. Um, 
yeah, the, the, the fighting odds don't really mean much to me. I mean, really, for me, it comes down to, you know, you know what I believe in and, and what I think I can do. You know, if I go into a fight confident, firing off cylinders, I don't think there's a guy in the world that can do me. Is this a career-changing win? Uh, of course, you went from unranked to the number 12 bandweight in the UFC. Uh, you know, is it almost like I finally made it? I'm a contender now. There's no looking back. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, and everything, everything will fight from now on is going to be like that. You know, I believe that everything will fight is going to be one step closer to being, the, uh, you know, getting to my ultimate goal of being the UFC champ. Uh, you know, with that in mind. Um, you know, there's still a lot of work to be done, you know. Uh, you know being number 12, uh, I, there's, there's one number there that I want to get rid of in the set, too. You know, I want to be number one. And that means, you know, i got to get to the gym. i got to start working, you know, even harder, and, you know, to improve my game, to just sharpen up my techniques and be the, you know, be the, be the best that I can absolutely be. Now, this caraway fight was, as it played out, very close. The scorecards indicated that it was a split decision. Uh, as they were being read after the fight, were you confident you did enough to get the job done? Yeah, I was. I was. I was. I knew I won that third round. You know, you can't beat a guy up for uh, for four and a half minutes and then, you know, in the last 30 seconds, you know, uh, lose a round because some guy's holding you on the cage or because you took a bad shot. And uh, he, he kind of caught you in the geeky. You know, I, I was controlling that round. I was carrying him that whole round. And, uh, you know, being the veteran that he is, being the tough guy that he is, he, uh, he absolutely emptied his gas tank in that last 30 seconds. But, you know, I honestly, in that last 30 seconds, after I rewatched it, uh, you know, I landed more hard shots. And, you know, that geeky attempt, I landed on top. So, for me, uh, you know, I still, I still won that last 30 seconds since. Uh, there's no question in my mind, you know, going in the judge, that if, if I would have lost that fight, I would have for sure really thought I got robbed. Was it nerve-wracking when you heard that it was a split? Because uh, I would imagine going through your head, it's like, how how is one judge thinking it went his way, and what's going to happen? Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, my only loss as a professional split decision loss in a fight that I definitely won, probably more decisively than I won that last fight. So, uh, Anytime I hear split decision, I'm I'm absolutely terrified. Yeah, and, and your last one against Tom Dukenwall was a split. So, uh, you know, uh, you, you've had a lot of those uh, nerve wracking yeah, moments. A, that, was a, that was an absolute bullshit split decision too. The fight against Dukenwall. I mean, everyone knew I won those. I won maybe three rounds, but definitely two rounds. There's no question. And as far as the caraway cards go, you're lucky that Adelaide Bird actually scored it for you because she had a, a few interesting scorecards that night. And, of course, as I'm sure you remember, she was uh, responsible for the very controversial Triple G Canelo scorecard. Um, and so you're lucky that, that uh, Bird actually gave it to you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, uh, Joe Rogan and Daniel Cormier were making fun of her during the fight. Maybe she heard and maybe she was like, okay, I got to get this one right. I don't know. I don't know. I uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was I was just gonna say, were you happy with their commentary this time? Because I know you weren't super thrilled with what they had to say in the Duke and Wall <laughs> fight. Yeah, yeah, I'm good with what they said. You know, I, I I wasn't really that upset about what they said in that Duke and Wall fight, but man, I just uh, I was fired up after after I watched the fight for the first time and kind of heard them dogging me a little bit. Uh, and, and they were like both in Duke and Wall while I was like beating his ass, so I was like. Uh, you know, a little bit, a little bit upset about that. Maybe felt like I didn't really get the respect that I deserved. But you know, in this sport, you know, respect is earned. And uh, you know, I think they're going to respect it from now on. You know, being that, you know, I'm going out, I'm, I'm, I'm winning as an underdog my last fight. And as far as how the fight played out, was it tougher than you anticipated? Uh, of course, you have to go in confident. But did you expect this close of a fight, this tough of one? Uh, Carraway, of course, did pretty well in the first round. You seem to take home the second quite clearly. And and the third round, uh, in, in most eyes, as far as the closer round, that was the third round. Uh, did you expect this tough of a, tough of a fight? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's a veteran, man. He, he the guy's got you know, almost thirty fights. Uh, he he's been in there with with uh, tons of guys in the top 10. He was on the Ultimate Fight. This guy's been in the UFC since I was in high school. You know, so I knew I wasn't going there against a cupcake. I knew that I was going to be fighting, you know, one of the one of the most elite guys in the world. So, uh, yeah, I 100% I was prepared for a war, and that's what I got. You know, Brian Kerry was a tough dude. You know, my hat goes off to him. He, he faced a lot of adversity, you know, in his life outside the cage. You know, that was openly, you know, on social media and on all this BS. Uh, 
you know, and he ignored it and he came on, he fought like a champion, you know, that's really what it comes down to, you know. Uh, so, you know, I have the utmost respect for that guy because, you know, the, there's a lot of people that, that uh, you know, said a lot, of, a lot of, you know, nasty shit to him. He still came out, he fought like a man, and, uh, now I wish him the best of luck in the future. So I was 100% expecting, uh, you know, a tough fight, and you know, I'm glad he brought it. Was it a little frustrating that this fight was in the middle of the fight pass early prelims just because, you know, you're Hell not going to yeah. get, yeah, because you're, you're not going to get the, quite the attention, uh, you, you know, on the FS1 card you get. And also, I remember when we talked before the fight, I, I asked you if you had heard whether or not you'd be on the pay per view. At the time, that seemed reasonable. And then to see you on the fight pass prelims when Sean O'Malley versus Andre Sukumta, unranked fighters in the same weight class were on the main card, uh, it, it seemed a bit of an interesting decision. Yeah, hell yeah. I think that Sean O'Malley gets a fucking dork. You know, as soon as he fights somebody real, he's going to be irrelevant in sport. You know, that guy, you know, he's living off the hype because he smoked a joint with Snoop Dogg, you know, but really, honest to God, as soon as he fights someone in the top 15, he's going to get fucked up. And the fact that he was on pay-per-view and I wasn't, you know, I'm not mad at UFC for it because that's a business decision. That guy's got a lot of hype around him. But ultimately, like, if he fought me or Brian Caraway, he would have got his ass absolutely whooped. You know, Brian Carey is the number seven guy in the world. I felt like him and I should have been on the pay per card, not Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley's like a dorky kid with a bunch of tattoos who like to smoke pot, who people think is cool. You know what I mean? As soon as he goes against a legit athlete, he's going to get his ass beat. He's going to be he's going to be completely irrelevant to the sport. He's going to be a you know a flyby guy that's in and out you know before you know it. Did you watch the fight against Yukumta? No, I didn't. I didn't even watch the fight. I didn't watch it. I. I did hear that he uh, hurt his foot and he couldn't even walk out of the cage. And then come to find out it wasn't even broken. Uh, that is, that is, you know, proves my point. He's a little soft ass bitch. I know you're in the top 15. He is not. He is uh, quite a bit. I mean, he's hyped up, but as far as rankings go, with your win over Caraway, he's still quite a bit lower than you. Is that a fight you would consider, though, just because you're not oh, the biggest fan? Oh, I would fight him. him. I would fight him. That is an easy payday. That's an easy payday. I'm telling you, as soon as, as soon as, I, it'd be, I literally, it'd be one double leg and a few punches away from me beating his ass. I mean, he, he's not even, he's not even relevant. I sit next to him, he, he's a, he's a skinny little dorky kid. I mean, he doesn't, he really doesn't even belong, he doesn't belong in there. I mean, it's, I'm telling you, as soon as, as soon as he fights a, a real man in the cage, he's gonna get exposed, he's gonna be screwed. Some people might argue uh, to that point that you should be focused on the people above you. How, how, how would you res- respond to anyone that says that just because you're looking? I mean, money money talks at the end of the day, right? And so, money talks. Money talks. What it's all about. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I took. I took. I know what it's like to fight a hyped up guy. Like I fought Tom Dukin a lot. You know what I mean? And Tom Dukin was a lot more legitimate opponent than than uh, than Sean O'Malley. I think if Tom Dukin and Sean O'Malley fought. Uh, Tom Duke and I would actually clean the, clean the clock. So, uh, you know, fighting Sean O'Malley, I, I 100%, you know, that'd be, a, that'd be an easy, that'd be easy money for me. I mean, why wouldn't I do that? You know what I mean? One, I don't have to fight a guy in the top 15 that's a killer. And two, I'm, you know, fighting a guy that everybody thinks is like the baddest dude in the world. So when I go out there and beat him, everyone's like, wow, this kid is really, really legit. You know, I, I know what that feels like, you know, having fought Tom Duke and a lot. So it'd be a win-win for me. I know the UFC is not going to give me Sean O'Malley. I mean, he, it doesn't matter what I say about him right now in this interview. You know, I, it, it, it doesn't even matter because they, they know that, you know, once I fight him, that that hype stops, all that shit stops. Because he, the kid, he can't handle this kind of pressure. You know what I mean? He can't handle a real opponent in the cage. Hmm. Very interesting. Uh, that, that's definitely a fight that, I mean, let's be honest, I'm not sure it'll happen as you said, but uh, it, it, it would certainly be interesting. Um, I, I'm curious, uh, you are three known the UFC and most first, uh, contracts for, for guys signing to the UFC are four fight deals. Does that mean you have one fight left on your contract? No, I re I renegotiated my contract. That's my second fight. Okay. So you have how many fights left on? Do you know? Two. Two on the contract. Okay. So the plan would probably, I mean, I, we're looking a little into the future, but as, as far as what you could say right now, the plan would be to have one more fight and then look to reno- renegotiate again. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I, I'm going to plan on, I'm planning on winning these next two and I'm going to renegotiate again, you know, or, you know, depending on, depending on where I go, uh, you know, it could be, I could be one fight where it's renegotiating again. We'll see. You know, I, I, I was in a, like you said, a four fight contract at first. You know, and I renegotiated after two fights because I decided I wanted a bigger opponent, you know. 
you know, who knows? Maybe maybe they give me some guy in the, in the top five and I renegotiate my next fight. I don't know. You know, I, you know, anything is possible. You know, it really depends on what the UFC, you know, feels feels like I'm ready for. You know, I, I trust their judgment and I and my management. You know, reading the sports, I trust what they're going to say. Um, you know, wh- wherever wherever it ends up going, you know, I'll be prepared and ready. Now, I looked at the UFC rankings, as I'm sure you did, uh, very excitedly going into Monday or Tuesday morning. You are number 12. Caraway happens to still be above you uh, at number 9. What's up with that? You know, I don't know how the UFC rankings work. If you ask me what I'm ranked, I'm the number 7 bantamweight in the world. I don't care what that ranking says. I know know where I am, you know, as an athlete. I beat number 7. I'm number 7. I suspect it'll change. I, I think with ha- how it works, I mean, media members submit their rankings, and I, I would assume some maybe just forgot about the fight or something something strange, and I'm, I, I think maybe the next update you will be ahead of Caraway, but is, it, but is it a little frustrating just because some people, I'm sure fans use the rankings as a tool to sort of see who's the top contenders and, and who's at the top of the division, and to, to not see you in sort of the deserved spot, might they, they might overlook you. Is that at all frustrating? Uh, yeah, you know, maybe a little bit. But ultimately, you know, I think my fans, the people that follow me, know, you know, know what I should be ranked and know, know my worth as a fighter. So, you know, they know where I should be. Uh, you know, the, the generic fan, you know, they might not know who I am right now. That's totally fine because nobody knew who I was eight months ago. And, you know, millions of people know who I am now. And in another eight months, you know, the whole world's know who I am. And, uh, you know, I'll be in the top five. And none of this will matter. And at the end of the day, it still must be pretty cool seeing your name in the rankings for the first time. No, absolutely. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, my mom sent me a picture of, of a, a fight ranking where I was where I was number seven, and, and she just wrote, you know, I'm so proud of you. And, uh, you know, it, it, it kind of really hit me right then when it was like, you know what, I, I really did this. You know, I went from being pretty much unranked and unknown to be, you know, uh, considered to be one of the, you know, top 10, top 15 guys in the world. Uh, you know, and, I, and I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself, uh, you know, for having done this. But, you know, I expected it. You know, I I did everything right. I did. I put all the work in. I, I, I made all the sacrifices that it takes to be here. And, you know, I'm just living proof that, you know, if, you, if you're willing to, to make the sacrifices, put the work in, you know, anything's possible. You've been fairly active throughout your currently uh, three-fight UFC career, making your debut back in July of last year. When do you want to get back in there? I, I assume you're, you know, you're enjoying a bit of family time or just time off, relaxation right now, but do you have any sort of timeline for when you'd like to fight again? Uh, you know, I, I'd, like to fight, I'd like to fight June, July. Um, you know, give me, give, me a month, give me a month and a half to, to kind of regroup and, uh, you know, improve on my last performance and you know we'll we'll get back in there in june july you know hopefully it's john lineker and uh you know then i'll be entering the top five and i'll be a contender you know looking at potentially a belt fight why john lineker is he is simply just because he's ahead of you or do you see something in that matchup you don't see in others uh i don't know why honest <laughs> god i just his where he's ranked and you know his name i don't even know it, it was like the first thing that came to my head, and ever since then, I've just been telling everyone, John Lineker. I'm just kind of, kind of putting it out there. Kind of the same way I put it out there with Brian Caraway, you know what I mean? When, when I was talking about fighting Brian Caraway, he already had Luke Saunders as an opponent, and there's no way I was ever going to fight him. And then he got hurt, and then, you know, three months later, I was fighting him. So I'm kind of doing the same thing. I'm kind of willing it. I'm waiting for uh, John Lineker's name to pop up, you know. I'm, I'm making a phone call from my manager here in a couple months, and I'm like, you want to fight John Lineker? I'm gonna say hell yeah, and then you know, it's all gonna be uh, it's all gonna be history after that. Well, and I think that's the way to do it. You mentioned that there there is no real reason; it's sort of just a name that pumped into your head first. But now that you're pushing it, there it just sort of increases your chances. Because if you told me you want Lineker and told your next interview you wanted, you know, I don't know, uh, uh, who knows, anyone, John Donson, and the next one Marlon Rice, the next one Jimmy Rivera, then you're probably not, you're not going to get any of them. And so I, I I think sticking to one name is probably smart. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's the name I. That's the first thing I thought of, and it's the name I'm stuck with. You know what I mean? He, he's the only guy that's not in the, in the you know, that, that top five that that isn't in contention for a title shot. No one's going to say John Lineker deserves a title shot. 
he's the only guy that he's like just outside of that range. So he's he's the guy to fight. He really is. Well, uh, Cody, thank you so much for the time. I appreciate it. Uh, great catching up, and congratulations once again on the victory over Brian Caraway this past weekend at UFC 222 in Las Vegas. Uh, before I let you go, remind my audience where they can find you on social media, and if there's anybody you'd like to thank or give a shout-out to, the floor is yours. Uh, so uh, you can find me at Cody Stamen on all my social media. I'd like to give a big thanks to Mike Kowalski, my strength conditioning coach, you know, for Making sure I'm in the best shape of my life. Uh, you know, thanks. I appreciate the interview. Um, yeah, I look forward to uh, getting into the top five here uh, in a few months. Appreciate it, man.